Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for episode 78, the show before I go to Fully Charged Live next weekend. Got a few stories that I'm following today, so let me get right into it. Finally, got some more information for Ontario uh, residents here in Canada about the extended offers for looking to buy a used EV. Used EV market is heating up as more inventory starts to become available. And uh, Plug and Drive has now offered another program called um, Scrap the, the Used Car, basically, Scrappage Incentive Program. And what it means is that you can get another $1,000 for trading in a qualified older ICE vehicle. Um, so you get a thousand bucks towards that and plus they also already have an existing program where they give you a thousand dollars for buying it a used electric vehicle you just have to attend one of their courses here in Toronto and I believe they do go around and do uh, uh, events and speaks at different places so you can check their website out or contact them for more details it's a partnership by plug and drive the clean air partnership and also a private fund from the MH Brigham Foundation so great because uh, Ontario doesn't really have any official programs in place. We've just got our national rebate going right now. Some of the other provinces do. So it's good to see that if you're in the market for a used EV, check out Plug and Drive for a couple grand back in your pocket. Now, thanks to a viewer for sending me uh, this link uh, for an EV charging network that uh, has been announced and uh, rolled out in the state of Oklahoma in the United States. It's going to be their first um, news statewide uh, EV charging network uh, made for just that state. It's a collaboration of various stakeholders, including a company called Francis Renewables. They're uh, laying out 110 charging sites, uh, and they actually should be up and running by now because it was supposed to start at the beginning of 2020. It's one of their, their most comprehensive fast charging networks uh, in the nation. Um, they've put charging stations, fast charging stations, every 50 miles or so of any geographic location. They'll have a 5G capability so that people waiting there, to, uh, sitting there to charge can have access to Wi-Fi and all that kind of stuff. So congratulations to the state of Oklahoma and some of the partners that, are got, that have got involved in putting more fast charging out in these areas that are lacking. Bringing it back home to Canada, Quebecor announced that they plan to go 100% electric by 2024 in the next four years. Montreal-based company is also looking to convert uh, a lot of their light trucks from internal combustion to electric engines as well. Um, they are going to spend more than $14 million, according to their estimates, to make this transition to about 200 Videotron vehicles. And then they're also going to purchase electric charging stations for their various locations and upgrade infrastructure in-house, achieving a 100% goal um, to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions by more than 50%. Again, great to see more fleet applications for EVs, especially all electric EVs, because they really, really have a strong total cost of ownership story, and of course, uh, getting the, uh, the perks of lowering GHGs. Throw it back over across the pond to the United Kingdom, where a story came out that they have now more than a quarter of a million of plugins on the road in the UK. Um, and over 29,000 charging points. They had registrations for plug-in cars, and that's uh, not just all electric vehicles, but also plug-in hybrids, of uh, almost 73,000 last year in calendar year 2019, which is their eighth year of consecutive growth, um, which brought their total plug-in car registrations in the UK to uh, just uh, over 271,000. Uh, great to see this growth and of course the number of public charging points increased to more than 29,000. Great to see continued growth in the UK and I know with further incentives and zero emission mandates and all kinds of other things, congestion charges and things like that, they will continue uh, to see really good uptake in the EV revolution. I promised that I'd follow the Sono Motor story, and I have. Um, they met their funding target after January 20th. In fact, they were successfully uh, able to, re to reach over 53 million euros in that campaign. Um, that came from about 75% of their reservation holders. Uh, as far as the monies go, 19% from existing or and or new investors and 6% from loans and donations. So it's great to see that they've uh, achieved their funding targets to take them into the next steps, which is uh, a path to bring the Scion into production markets, uh, into production as quickly as possible. Um, now with that they have all this cash uh, and they've completed their community funding, they're going to finance construction of series of prototypes 
and set up production. They want to produce a total of about 260,000 scions uh, over the next uh, seven to eight years uh, at the former Saab plant in uh, Trollhattan, Sweden. And the company currently has 13,000 reservations for the scion and climbing. So congratulations to, to Sono Motors. I'm really happy that they'll continue to be around and uh, keep monitoring their progress and see how they make out for this year. Some other car news. Uh, Jaguar has uh, been spotted with their testing mule. Some spy shots of the all-electric Jaguar XJ uh, is out there. Uh, it doesn't say uh, these are some spy shots you're seeing here. Uh, it's supposed to come out sometime this year in 2020, an all-electric version of this. Um, there also will be uh, ice uh, or internal combustion versions of this as well. Uh, it's based on uh, Jaguar's new modular longitudi <laughs> longitudinal Boy, it's a mouthful today. Architecture, MLA platform that can support both EV and combustion vehicles, as I've said. Um, they have a, I don't know where these numbers come from, but it looks like early reports indicate a range of about 292 miles or 470 kilometers of all battery range. Um, and that's basically about it. No other specs other than they're, they're testing some of these mules out there and, uh, and they, they're continuing to see an, an uptake on that. So great to see Jaguar continue moving forward with their electrification plans. I talked about the MG uh, that's going gangbusters in uh, Europe. Uh, now it's actually uh, starting to be pre-ordered in India. And I mentioned India on a couple of shows uh, that they are, you know, really looking to ramp up electrification and EV adoption and, and other, you know, vehicular adoption as well. But MG has announced that they're shipping, that they're going to be uh, sending the uh, their SUV MG ZS, all electric, um, nice little sport utility vehicle. And they've actually uh, sold uh, almost uh, almost 3,000 units now just in, in about a month, uh, just under a month. doesn't sound like a lot, but it's pretty good for a smaller company like MG is. And uh, so really the uptake has been really, really strong that they're seeing. And this is kind of a sweet spot for the Indian marketplace uh, because you've got... You've got a good mix of government subsidies for electric vehicles and infrastructure that are available for consumers. And also this vehicle has decent range and has really kind of really good sustainable luxury, as they call it, and an attractive price. And that's the key kicker here. I know that this is a really, really good bargain price for what you get in a vehicle, and especially with the appointments. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, great to see that they're uptake. Now they've announced that they're going to tweak this version for India a little bit different. It's going to come out with a 73 kilowatt hour battery pack capacity to get a theoretical range of about 500 kilometers. Um, so we don't I don't know that for sure, but that's what they're planning on. So uh, continue to wait and see. But it looks like this is starting to get some uptake. And I, I expect to see deliveries uh, in the Indian marketplace uh, later this year. And staying out in the Southeast Asian marketplace uh, and, and that continent, um, Sri Lanka, a country you don't really hear much from an electrification standpoint, but uh, there's a company um, that has been uh, building a concept supercar electric, all electric vehicle for some time, and they're going to be making more of a splash this year, specifically at the Geneva Motor Show. But uh, it's their first super EV, and it's called the Vega EVX. And uh, no, not this Vega, this Vega. Um, and I've had one of those Vegas before <laughs> back in the 70s, and it wasn't a pleasant experience. This, I'm sure, is going to be much different. Um, you know, it's interesting. They've got this car. They're, they're building it as a supercar, 540 volt, 40 kilowatt hour uh, pack, they're saying, is good enough for about 250 kilometers, 155 mile range. That that seems to jive. Fast charging in Chatamo and CCS uh, with 120 kilowatts. Um, just kind of scrolling to some of the specs. Now, they want to get this thing under three seconds for a zero to 100 kilometer time or zero to 62 mile per hour time. Uh, they got a couple of 300 kilowatt motors that they're outfitting this thing with, uh, which gives a combined torque of 804, uh, sorry, combined horsepower of 804, horsepower and torque of about 560 newton meters and it could even be more than that depending on how they tweak it now this thing's not going to be cheap they're t advertising about two hundred fifty thousand united states dollars or usd so this is going to be for the the half of the one percenters out there basically uh but you know i think what we can take from this is that we have a country that we would not have thought is in is in the involvement of electrification and even you know building their own vehicles and, and learning that whole process and understanding what goes into that. This company has never produced an electric vehicle before. Um, and in fact, 
out in the country, they've never done that. They're known more for as a farming type of community and agricultural con uh, country. So, um, you know, it's, it's good to see that they're branching out looking at different elements and uh, these guys are playing around with some of the battery chemistries and stuff so we'll see what happens but congratulations on this company and uh, all the best to you and keep watching all right and that's it for this edition of ev revolution show episode 78 here um, thank you very much for sticking with me and watching and of course uh, all the feedback and comments uh, that I get on YouTube. I appreciate that. Please continue to send me comments or provide comments. So like, unlike it or dislike if you want to. I always get a few of those but uh, very happy to see that most people like the content that I'm putting out there. So it's much, much, much appreciated to see. Thank you for watching. Uh, always, always very humbled by my Patreon supporters. Thank you very much. Uh, continue to, to see uh, information and talk to some of those folks. I know I'll be seeing a couple of people, I believe, down at Fully Charged uh, Austin coming up. So I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. If you're not sure what it's about, check out my website. If you're interested in helping me out to keep these shows going, even a dollar a month is uh, would, would go uh, would help me out. So appreciate that. Thank you very much. Now, I mentioned Fully Charged. This is uh, the last show before I head down next weekend to Fully Charged USA in Austin, Texas. So I will not be doing a show next week because I'll be busy uh, away for that weekend and flying out a, a day before and coming back a day after. Uh, but it should be an exciting and then I'll, I'll uh, sh throw that show up in a couple of weeks uh, the highlights from there um, if you are attending please uh, come by my booth I've got booth number 300 uh, in the exhibitor hall and I'll also be roaming around doing filming and uh, interviews and doing all my stuff also I'm on a panel on Saturday the time is at 3 30 in the afternoon it's in, and it's in the uh, Giga Theater if I've got that right but you can check out their schedule it should be coming out should, should come out by now so you can check out the show schedule and get the lay of the land and all that stuff so look forward to meeting a lot of folks down there I've got some feedback already from people saying they're going look forward to seeing me and it should be an exciting time for their first blast into the U as a marketplace um, and I believe that that's probably all I have for uh, for this show I did want to make a correction on the last show that I talked about level 3 fast charging and I got some comments back on that saying ah it's not the right terminology and I do apologize you are correct it's actually uh, there's four forms of charging according to the J1772 version 2017 charging standards AC level 1 uh, is up to 1.92 kilowatts. So that's really, really slow tri trickle charging uh, for some of the older vehicles. AC level two is up to 19.2 kilowatts. So that covers pretty well the broad spectrum of all of most of the level two charging out there that you'll put in your, find in your garage or in destination chargers or things like that. Um, most vehicles uh, don't go past that. Uh, and then you've got your DC fast charging. You've got level one and level two of those. Level one being up to 48 kilowatts. So most now are, are accepting 50 kilowatts or higher uh, from a vehicular perspective and then you've got dc level 2 up to 400 kilowatts which is the ultra fast now standards that are coming out with vehicles like tesla and others that are going up to 350 or so kilowatts so thank you very much for people who corrected me on that always open to suggestions and uh, letting me know if i goof and say something wrong i want to make sure i get all my information straight because i learn by you guys so thank you very much for that and again that's it for the show so thanks very much for watching uh, everybody stay safe and uh you know thank you for tuning in and i hope to see a lot of you fully charged and until the next show i'll see you when i see you take care bye bye